In international news, a long-simmering conflict between Armenia and Azerbaijan has seen a major escalation this month in an area along the northern border between the two countries in the Tavush region. Let's show you the map. Both countries, former Soviet republics in the South Caucasus part of the world, with neighbors like Russia and Turkey and Iran, it is a volatile neighborhood. Two countries fought a war in the early 1990s. Ever since, there have been conflicts, flare-ups, and a cold peace. For more, let's bring in Hikmat Harjive, who is an assistant to the president of Azerbaijan. He's joining us today from the capital of Baku. Good to have you on the program. What are the issues at play here in your mind? Uh, thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. Uh, uh, thank you also for this description that our Azerbaijan has been suffering from the Armenia's military aggression since the collapse of the Soviet Union. And Armenia immediately after the collapse of the Soviet Union started a war against Azerbaijan. As a result of this war, 20% of Azerbaijani territories has been occupied by neighboring Armenia, and also Armenia conducted notorious ethnic cleansing in the occupied territories of Azerbaijan. Therefore, we have uh, 1 million refugees and IDPs uh, since the start of this conflict. And uh, there is also a mechanism that's called Minsk Group that involves Russia, United States, and France for the resolution of the conflict. But unfortunately, we haven't seen any tangible result with regard to the conflict. And this conflict is about territorial integrity, inviolability of borders, and sovereignty of Azerbaijan. Also, right of Azerbaijani IDPs and refugees to return back to their homes. And 30 years, Azerbaijani people are suffering from this conflict. And uh, recently, we also have seen yet another escalation in the border area between Armenia and Azerbaijan. And uh, here, we should be very clear that we have a line of contact in the sovereign territories of Azerbaijan, where we have a physical presence of the armed forces as a result of occupation. And uh, with the recent escalation happened in the border area between Armenia and Azerbaijan. Armenian armed forces used an heavy artillery shelling Azerbaijani positions, and there were the casualties among the Azerbaijani militaries. In the meantime, Armenian side, in a discriminate and deliberate manner, attacked Azerbaijani mm. civilians and civilian targets. Let me jump in here. How do you hope to de-escalate this? Uh, currently, we have a de-escalation of the situation, but uh, it's a major question is uh, to Armenian side, because Armenia has started with uh, military provocation with a certain uh, goals, actually, their intention to create a new uh, hotbed of the conflict in the border of two countries. In the meantime, uh, one of the strategic goals that they try to reach is to uh, pose threat to the east-west corridor, including the strategic energy projects of Azerbaijan that's now running in the area. Uh, but uh, any time this provocation can happen from Armenian side, because physically we have fact of military occupation and aggression in the sovereign territory of Azerbaijan. 100,000 of Armenian troops in the territories of Azerbaijan. And uh, we also have an intangible scenario reminiscent of the First World War, Second World War. It's yet another uh, question that in the 21st century, in the OSC area, we have an intangible scenario. And one OSC member country occupies sovereign territories of another country. Mm. And unfortunately, Armenia uh, tries to propagate yet another picture uh, of the realities on the ground. But the reality speaks for itself. Armenia is occupied territories of Azerbaijan. As regards for the escalation of the conflict, Azerbaijan doesn't have any uh, strategic military objectives or purposes in the border area of two countries. And Azerbaijan, uh, by all means, tries to ensure peace, security, and calmness in this area, and also to resolve conflict in a peaceful manner within the territorial integrity of Azerbaijan, also as demanded by the United Nations Security Council resolutions. Yes, also if, if, for... let me just jump in here. Uh, there was a threat that was made uh, by the Azerbaijani uh, side about uh, targeting an Armenian uh, nuclear uh, power plant as well. What can you tell us about that? Uh, actually, it was an emotional, uh, personal comment by a low-ranking uh, military uh, officer from Azerbaijani Armed Forces. It's not an intention of uh, Azerbaijani side, and Azerbaijan uh, doesn't, uh, you know, have any intention to target any critical infrastructure in Armenia. On the contrary, actually, Armenian uh, president, previous president Serge Sarkisyan, threatened Azerbaijan to target Azerbaijani oil and gas infrastructure, including the Azerbaijan's capital Baku, with Iskander missiles. And he said that we can turn into the ruins of Azerbaijan's major cities. But as regards to the Metsamor power plant, of course, it's not an intention of Azerbaijan. It's just yet another piece of the propaganda by Armenian side. But uh, Metsamor nuclear power plant is an only nuclear power plant in the world that uses a Chernobyl technology. It's an outdated, it's a maintenance is uh, poor. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, with uh, Nuclear power plant is a source of trafficking radioactive materials, illegal radioactive materials trafficking in our region. 
International Atomic Energy Agency, European Union, and other institutions insistently calling Armenia to shut down with a uh, nuclear power plant that can call uh, another Chernobyl sort of winter in our region. Unfortunately, Armenian side refuses to do that. Mr. Harjiva, we want to thank you for taking the time to come on the program here in Canada and give us your perspective on the story. Thank you for this. Thank you. If you have any two seconds, two, uh, seconds I would like to add one moment. Uh, I, yeah, 15 seconds. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, 15 seconds. Just with, with opportunity, I would like also make an appeal to Azerbaijanis living in Canada and also call Canadian law enforcement agencies because certain Armenian lobby groups attacked Azerbaijanis in Los Angeles, in uh, Paris, in Brussels. And therefore, we also call Canadian law enforcement agencies to be vigilant and Azerbaijani community members they also should be vigilant. But Armenian terror organizations, that's called ASALA, and Armenian Revolutionary Federation, that's a Dashnak organization, can potentially attack Azerbaijani civilians. Therefore, we call for their vigilance. All right. Thank you for this. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.